Every once in a while, you'll find a game that really encapsulates its intended genre and setting. To me, Red Dead Redemption is the Western game. If I want to experience any part of the Old West, be it fist fighting bears or rustling around with some local cowpokes, I pop in Red Dead Redemption. If I want a teenage episodic drama along with all those deliciously moody songs and emotional idiots, I go for Life is Strange. If I want to journey through the nine circles of hell and experience horrors beyond my petty imagination, I'll turn on Rust. Intruder. What are you doing? The Beatles Rock Band works the same for me in that regard. To me, it is less the Beatles Rock Band and more the Beatles the Video Game. I mean, this is THE Beatles game if there ever was one. It allows you to play through the band's entire history from start to finish, hitting every album along the way. Top it off with dreamscapes, archival footage and photos, as well as one hell of a style and legacy, you can start to see why the Beatles Rock Band might just be my favorite rock band game. Alright, I gotta call bullshit on myself right now because I swear to god I made that same claim in the last two videos. But come on man, just take a step back and look at that starting lineup of rock band games! The Beatles Rock Band was the third rock band game of the entire franchise. One, two, and then the Fab Four... there we go. That's one hell of a starting trilogy. I guess you can call this my favorite standalone rock band because, oh man, it is standalone. No exports with this game. As pissed as Teenage Adam was that he couldn't pair Painkiller with Here Comes the Sun, I do appreciate the legacy this game has adopted because of its inclusive nature. You can't really get the Beatles anywhere else in a game, nor experience them like the Beatles Rock Band offers. The Dreamscapes add so much to the songs, and I wouldn't really want to see the Duke of Gravity belting out any McCartney tunes. Although it is kinda crazy how far harmonics went to stop you with tampering with the Beatles songs. No crowd boos, no drum freestyles, and a limited whammy bar. Hey, gotta keep them iconic. Know what I mean, John Drake? Hmm. This game has had a wild production history, with George Harrison's son Donnie pitching the idea of the game to MTV President Van Toffler at a random luncheon, as well as Yoko Ono showing up at Harmonix HQ to provide some fiery critical feedback. But I do want to try and focus on the setlist a bit more, so you have to look up some of that juicy development history on your own time. VH1 produced a fantastic documentary about the making of the game, but it's tough to find online. I'll link some crappy mirrors in the description if I can find them, but I still recommend a watch because the story of how Harmonix pulled this game off is really interesting. Real quickly though, I do want to mention some of the new things the Beatles Rock Band brought in on September 9th, 2009. Vocal Harmonies made their debut, which would become a series staple later on. Some kick-ass new peripherals were also released, resembling some of the more famous Beatles instruments, and I am so jealous of anyone who has that funky ass bass so cool! Otherwise, the format for standalone band-centric games was made here and later concluded with the bigger than Jesus follow-up Green Day Rock Band. We'll get to that in another video. Alright, so let's jump into the setlist. This one is gonna be strange to examine. Almost all of these are critically acclaimed albums, and most of the songs on the disc are chart toppers, so there's not much for me to really highlight here. What is nice is they managed to fit in the 12 original UK albums, as well as Magical Mystery Tour, the Love Remix album, and a collection of singles which I put under the banner of the Past Masters album. The setlist features 45 songs, but only 44 tracks. This is because Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band is mashed up with, with a little help from my friends to form one song. Another strange little oddity is the Within You Without You mashup with Tomorrow Never Knows from the Love album. This is technically one song because it is its own remixed version from an album. Also, those little hints of Tomorrow Never Knows are the only Ever. time Revolver peeks its head into the setlist. All songs can only be played in specific venues or dreamscapes, so there is no mix and matching between different eras. Here's a list of all the on-disc songs for those curious. Would you just look at that? The game uses all original master recordings and no exports are possible. So that basically concludes uh, the Onda set list. Oh, thank you. Hey, oh, you're too much. Uh, all right, come on, guys. Hey, everyone, shut up! <laughs> <coughs> Something I also want to look at is the downloadable songs, because I think this is where things get real interesting. The DLC for this game wasn't a smattering of some of the Beatles' greatest hits, and was instead tracks to round out some of the more famous albums. The albums that were filled out through DLC was Rubber Soul, Sgt. Pepper's, and Abbey Road. These were the songs already present on disc, along with the DLC additions. Abbey Road. Sgt. Pepper's Rubber Soul. Now, the DLC additions to Sgt. Pepper's and Rubber Soul were sold normally by your favorite songs from the album individually or by the whole album in one go. However, Abbey Road had a couple peculiarities. Oh boy, big words. See, the only individual songs you could buy from Abbey Road were Maxwell's Silver Hammer, Oh Darling, and Because. All the other songs, or the second half of Abbey Road, had to be purchased in a bundle. So if you wanted Golden Slumbers, you would have to buy a pack that included all the other songs. That was not true for the Wii though, as you can get most of the songs individually there. 
However, an interesting addition came out of this, and that was the Abbey Road medley. This was a new song which basically combined the entire second half of Abbey Road into one playable song, including the end which was already on the disc to begin with. I love this addition because it's basically a non-stop last hurrah to the album with no breaks! Chugga chugga. Another interesting addition comes with the tiny little song Her Majesty, though this requires a bit of explanation, so get ready. <laughs> So, Her Majesty was originally supposed to fit between Mean Mr. Mustard and Polythene Pam on the original Abbey Road album. This beginning jolt of sound is actually the ending to Mean Mr. Mustard. And the ending of Her Majesty is supposed to strum on into Polythene Pam. But Paul didn't like Her Majesty, so he had it removed. It was later put back into the album unlisted as a closer. However, this version didn't have an ending strum, so it sounded like this. When Her Majesty was put into the Beatles Rock Band as DLC, the ending strum was re-added, so now it sounds like this. And I guess that sparked controversy, uh, who cares, moving on! There was actually one extra DLC song that appeared on its own separate from the albums, and that was All You Need Is Love from Magical Mystery Tour. The song was released exclusively for the Xbox at first on the game's release, with the proceeds from the DLC being donated to Doctors Without Borders. Within two weeks, All You Need Is Love became the fastest selling downloadable song across any Rock Band game in 2009. The song had been downloaded more than 100,000 times by the end of September, and while it maybe didn't break the overall number of downloads like Don't Stop Believing and Bring Me to Life, it did generate over $200,000 for charity. So that's something. Sadly, no other DLC songs were later released for the game, and on May 5th, 2016, all the Beatles Rock Band DLC was removed from the online store due to license expiration. But hey, you're pretty cool, so I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. You can still download some Beatles-esque songs by purchasing them from their solo careers. So Rock Band later released some DLC from Paul and John's time after the Beatles. First was a 2009 live album by Paul McCartney featuring his songs Jet, Sing the Changes, and Band on the Run. Then we saw John Lennon's Imagine show up on the Rock Band 3 set list, which later was followed by the entire album in November 2010. Finally, some more McCartney songs showed up in December, with Maybe I'm Amazed followed by some songs with the wings. These included Helen Wheels, Let Me Roll It, and The Master of Band on the Run. But I already bought Band on the Run, and now there's the better version, I gotta buy it again like some big idiot. This is why I can't get a job. I gotta make super fucking Rock Band videos the rest of my life. <laughs> As far as I know, you can't get any solo stuff from George or Ringo, but Donnie Harrison was featured with his band The New Number 2 on Rock Band 2's release. That free track pack I talked about in the last video included the new Number 2 song Crazy Tuesday, with their song Yomp also able to be purchased through the store. And why not give it a buy? You owe him that much, he's the reason this game exists and he's, he's very hungry! By the way, I just want to mention that Giles Martin, son of Beatles producer George Martin, made sure High Fidelity Beatles songs would be in the game, so let's have a round of applause for him. So those DLC tracks and the few solo songs are the most you're gonna get out of the Beatles so far. Overall though, I think what we got was a great span of the Beatles' lifetime. Some song choices were strange with their lesser known inclusions, which I assume were made to round out instrument difficulty. Some main hits are missing though, like She Loves You, Help, and Let It Be. Also, couldn't you just put in happiness as a warm gun? For me! Still, I am very pleased with what we got. The ability to go through the entire album with the DLC was a nice bonus for diehard Beatles fans. The overall style and presentation of this game is superb, and I'm glad they stuck to their guns in keeping the game iconic and not allowing exports. It means if you want the Beatles the video game, you ain't gonna find it anywhere else. The Beatles Rock Band was actually the first time I had ever really dug deep into the band's music. When the announcement was released, I was like, but all I know is Yellow Submarine. But then the trailer came out and I was like, I know that one, and that one, and that one. I sang this in elementary school, just like the rest of the country. I swear to God, those Beatles Rock Rock Band trailers became my most watched trailers in history! It was a good thorough introduction to the band's music for a youngin like me, and it helped me appreciate the Beatles music on a deeper level now that I'm older and listening to all these albums again. Speaking of appreciating the Beatles, I just want to quickly recommend a good channel if you're interested in some Beatles knowledge. It's called The Holly Hobbs, and our boy here explains a lot of history behind some great Beatles songs, as well as writing some of his own original songs about everyone's favorite cough machine. <laughs> I really consider watching some of his vids, as the song specific ones are easy to watch in short little 3 to 5 minute chunks. This guy's smart, he's got a good voice, and he knows what he's talking about. So you know, check him out. So yeah, the Beatles. Ever heard of him? This was really the holy grail of standalone band games at the time for its style, substance, and I mean, come on, it's the Beatles. What, 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 what are we doing here? The amount of effort that went into this game lets me look back at it fondly, and I'm so glad that this game got made. Will a sequel ever come? I wish, but me thinks nah. 
I'm still happy with what we have as a great Beatles video game. And that was the Beatles Rock Band Setless Examination video. Now back to John, Paul, George, and Ringo on their YouTube Horizon report. What's it look like out there, guys? Look at John, will ya? What's the matter, John, love? Social experiments on the front page. Nude and blue and funny and crazy prank videos. I've been sighted within the vicinity of this theater. Oh, there's only one way to go out. How's that? Singing! One, two, three, ha! <laughs>